Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's workshop. This is a King's monthly workshop. A King stands for Association of Children's Authors and Illustrators of Nigeria. And um, we run monthly workshops for our members and non-members alike to share information, share knowledge, and for everyone to benefit from so that we can create uh, best children's books. So welcome to this month's a workshop. I am going to now move on to the reason we're here today, today's workshop. Today we are going to be talking about making the most of pair review groups and doing this with us today. Um, next slide please, is Chinyere Evelyn Ifedior. Missing to continue from here. Thank you for joining us today, Chinyere. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you, Basirat. I'm grateful um, for the opportunity to, you know, just lead this conversation. I feel that this is actually a conversation um, for us here at Akin. One of the things that stuck out to me um, at the point of my one uh, one of the things that I saw was the opportunity. Um, and, and today for our workshop, we're we're discussing making the most of peer review groups. Okay, please the next slide. All right, um, so what is peer review? I know that uh, some of us in the corporate or the medical field are very, very aware or very familiar with the term peer review. It's basically, um, but for us, uh, for this conversation, I'm just going to be narrowing only towards us as it affects us as children's authors. And so for us, it's feedback from a fellow author or authors on a manuscript or published work. This feedback is meant to, it, it comes from a very objective point of view. And the, the idea is to support, to actually enhance the work of the author. Now, the point of it being objective is very key. Um, because you're trying to, you're not just trying to make the, the author feel good about the manuscript. You're trying to help to enhance the work of the author. And so it needs to be objective. As a matter of fact, um, some journals or in some scenarios or some groups uh, for peer review, sometimes the author of the work and indeed, the reviewers are not actually um, known by the other party. The other person doesn't know who is reviewing or whose work they are reviewing, just as a way of trying to create an enabling environment for objectivity. So um, it's something that we're going to be doing a lot of. And so we don't, the whole idea is a feedback from a fellow author. It's objective and it is supportive. Please, can I can you help me with the next slide? Thank you. Hello. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, so one of the things that you would ask yourself is, okay, so why do I need a peer reviewer when I already have um, a professional editor? Aren't they doing the same thing? Quite close, they're both supporting the work, they're both helping to improve the manuscripts. Okay, but one thing is okay, so the difference really is that an editor, when you give your manuscripts to an editor, an editor can modify it, suggest changes. As a matter of fact, if you send in an editable document, they go straight to do the changes as they go, as they uh, read through the manuscripts. Now for a peer reviewer, a peer reviewer basically reads this and asks 
very key questions and give specific opinions on the work. Now, Neva is trying to help you to highlight the strength of your story. So when a reviewer, when a peer reviewer is looking at your work, the peer reviewer in, in, in your mind, you should be looking first for the strength of that story. And then what can be also restating the strength of the story. So it's kind of just like, um, you know, it's described in some area, uh, some places as a sandwich method. You identify the strength of the story. You tell the author of the medium and reemphasize the strength of the story. While an editor, when you give the work to the editor, the editor is just free to go on and just keep making the changes. Then you, of course, when it comes back, when your manuscript comes back to you, you could have a back forth with the job, retain some, keep some. Then, of course, if you are working under a publishing house, you may not have so much of that room, but then still, your work is your work. So and a reviewer will give you that opinion of the strength of your story and the areas that need improvement. Now, when you're signing up for or submitting your work for, to sign up for your work or submit your work for, for peer review, it's actually not an instinctive thing. It's not like, it's something that we learn and it becomes a part of our writing process as we, um, as we grow as authors or as we go on the journey of authorship. Now, you, you remember that in our definition of peer review, we mentioned, I mentioned manuscripts and published work because an author can actually um, seek for peer review of a work that is already published, not just at the manuscript stage. You want a fellow author to give you to review your work that you have um, a very because at the point of my writing and then publishing my first book adventures of mr sweet potato I, I didn't yet know about peer review so it was after my publishing the work adventures of mr sweet potato that it just came to me it wasn't restrictive i had to learn it i guess by you know, when you're reading through blogs and, you know, getting familiar with book platforms, I just knew that, oh, I need to have a, someone that has been on this journey longer than I am with, uh, you know, and with a lot of experience and a lot of uh, results, you know, someone that has really um, achieved a lot in, as an author, as a children's author. So I approached one of us, Mrs. Shade Fadike. She doesn't know me personally at all. I just sent her an email and, um, and it, um, she was so gracious to review my work, Adventures of Mr. Sweet Potato. I'll still talk about the content of that review um, when we get to a slide about that, but um, I'll tell you also how I felt when the review came back. She's a much, a much more senior uh, author and uh, we love her book, ABCs of um, the fun ABC. And so she gave me very good peer, um, review, very useful reviews, which also now forms part of my pre-press uh, journey. And we'll get to that. Okay, so for last, peer reviews, no peer pressure. Um, yeah, because you may just feel like, oh, a fellow also looking at my work. Oh, wouldn't that be so much? I don't know. But then it's not a peer pressure. It's it's a supportive process. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, I need to be very fast. Next slide. So please, if you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to put it in the chat. Okay, so why is uh, peer peer important? Of course, I've mentioned it here and there, it's to maintain high standards. And so for us in Arcane, it's something that we're now, you know, going to be focusing on a lot. And so um, the point is this networking and this rubbing, uh, rubbing together will help 
us to maintain high standards in the work that we put out there. It's also like a quality assurance mechanism. It's a way of us improving. And it's also a way because when your fellow author gives us, um, you would actually, in paying attention, you would know whether you actually met your right goals. Because I believe that whenever we set out our, when we are writing in progress, when we have our manuscripts, we do have, you know, a writing goal or writing goals in mind. Now, a peer review helps to, you know, give you, take you back to not to check whether you actually met your writing goal so that's very 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 important because you know you can get so excited in writing the story you've written it all, but then the peer review will help you to check if you met your writing goal so these are very very key these are very important so um let's bear that in mind next slide please then finding a peer review team um as we've highlighted you know Writers associations provide peer review teams for their members. Then you can also go by private arrangement where you seek out um, you seek out fellow authors and you know request for them to review your work. So um, and then publishing houses and journals usually also set up um, peer review teams. So if you are on that publishing house, that would be one of the things that you benefit. And of course, as a member of our king or aspiring member of our king, having a peer review team at your disposal is something that you benefit. So that's how you find peer review teams. Please, next slide. Yes, this is the work, <laughs> where the work is. Now, um, getting the work, of peer review done. Now it takes um, for the peer reviewer or the organization, the association that provides peer review services. Of course, it takes a lot of time and dedication. It takes um, experience. Now I'm aware that some associations they provide uh, peer review sessions, breakout sessions at their conferences. For example, the Society for um, Children's Book or uh, writers international at some of their conferences as you register for the conference they also you have you may have to if they there is there are breakout sessions for peer reviews they will call then um when you submit your work for a peer review you wait for then the review is done and the feedback is you receive the feedback so in one of the um i saw what the the example that they have is when uh during the peer review session uh of course um in this kind of setup where it is done at a breakout sessions of a conference of course the reviewer and the author or the writer they know themselves there is no anonymity in this one so it's just like a round table conversation and one of the things that a reviewer will be asking of the story your story is satisfying for them what the whether the main characters you know developed in the story does the character face obstacles in their quest? How does the story relate to the emotional world of a child, adolescent, or young adult? What is the story problem and whose problem is it? Is the voice didactic? Does it, you know, all of these questions reviewers would usually ask when they are going through the work, the manuscript. Now, um, it is important that. Um, you remove you as an author, as a writer, you try to not be so emotional about the reviews, just pay attention, you know, you listen, take notes, and, um, you know, um, you know, just take notes and think through it, and then use the feedback you get to improve your work. Now, your editor is expected to have help with these but then 
um, just consider this as a second level, maybe a second level for making sure that your manuscript is very good, that you have that quality, that that high standard is there. Now, let me talk a little bit about my peer review experience by our own Mrs. Shade Fadipe. Okay, so um, okay, so um, like I said, that was already a published work that I sent to her. Um, I also send the work to child education educationists. These are part of the things that they told me. If you have a copy of the Adventures of Mr. Sweet Potato, you will notice that where the illustrator has the map of the world with the different continents, the continents are not written there. So because it's a picture book for little children, it would have be really good for the names of those continents to be written there. Now, if that was a book for, so this book is basically for preschoolers. Now, if it was a book for primary school, it could fly because maybe it will now be like a test for the child to go know the names of continents. But because it was a preschool book, it would have been good for the names of those continents to be boldly written on it. So the reader, during the read aloud, they can also practice to know the names of continents. So that was one of the feedback I got from children's book writers and professionals. Then, of course, to use a simpler font, the point of the font is not to distract. I'm just reading and then, okay, uh, then number four, very, very important, read international standards for nonfiction writing. So I'm um, permit me to keep using this at my adventures of Mr. Sweet Potato as uh, an example. Now, that book is non-fiction, but written in a fictional way. It's basically about sweet potato, talks about what kind of crop it is, how it grows. So it's just to familiarize children with growing crops and making food, you know, so the science of it, and it's a little science book if you look at it. So I didn't know about um, international standards for nonfiction writing for children. Now, in getting um, a post-publication post peer review, uh, Mrs. Shade Fadiqle drew that to my attention. So now it, it becomes part of me. So if in the future for that uh, standard, so I make sure that I abide by them in my book. Remember, peer review helps us to maintain high standards. Then, two-level proofing. Now, usually in your writing process, it, you, it may go like this, that your, after your first draft, um, sorry, I just want to run through the thing Then we will now just have a conversation. I'm almost done. So after your first draft, your manuscript, usually there'll be a self-edit. There'll be a self-edit, then you send to your editor. Um, for me, at that point, when it comes back and it's get all cleaned from the editor, I would do the proofreading. I usually will get a third party to do it because I may not catch any typos. And so um, for, for my first publication, after that first proofreading, when the professional editing was done, I didn't do any other proofreading. Now I realized that after the illustrator had done his work and was putting and was designing the book, that's the editorial layout and the design. Now, instead of just lifting, a, a, just lifting the content of the manuscript to design, to put together with the illustration and layout, in the process of it, I don't know what happened. Some punctuations just disappeared, you know? So, and of course that went to press and was printed. And so these are things that, um, so this now forms, so now what I now do is after the first proof reading and the manuscript, the final manuscript sent to the editorial team, the, the person that puts together the illustrations and the um, words, and the, everything is done, no more changes. Then it is printed and another proofreading is done at this level. That's something that I gained from that process. So that even no matter how much you scream and say, just 
don't change anything, just lift and paste. Something may just, a comma, a full stop, uh, an exclamation mark may just disappear, or a word can even just disappear. So um, these are things that we will gain by maybe a fellow author actually having helped in the process or you know receiving peer review. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Um, I'll check the chats whether there is any. Okay, no, no, there is no um, questions now. Okay, Kessiana, please, can you move to the next slide? Okay, so best use of peer review feedback. You know, how to make, oh, okay, yes. Can you go back? Can you go back to that other slide? The one with the child dragging the books. Not this one. Uh, I'm not even sure because I'm not looking at my own slides again. Okay, there is a slide with a child, a little child. Okay, this one. So at this point, I want to ask you a question. I would want, I would really crave everyone's indulgence to just give me their answer. So which, from all we've talked about now, which would you prefer to have peer review um, done? Is it your manuscripts or your published work? Which one would you prepare for peer review? Please, you could just, um, you can unmute and speak, or you could type anyone. And you can tell the me- The manuscript would be better because you would save on um, so that you don't have to print twice. So for me, I, I would, you know, I would like it at the manuscript. I would suggest the manuscript stage, though it's never too late, like you said, you know, I have some books that I've got like three or four iterations of them. Um, I think Toby visits the conservatory it was done about three times before the actual copy that you see today. Yeah, but a cheaper way would have been for me to have gotten it peer reviewed at the manuscript stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wonderful. Okay, um, great. Okay, manuscripts. I see both are helpful, but the okay, uh, Mrs. Doctor. Maduya says both are helpful, but the manuscript is definitely better. Yes. Um, Miss Irene says manuscripts. Uh, Basira, Miss Basira says both. Both. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> um, anyone else? Yeah, please, every, every, oh, we are 10 in the house. So, please, I would like to hear from someone else. Anyone else? Okay. Um, let me see. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Choma says, Ms. Choma says, manuscripts, proof copy stage is also a good one. Okay. Okay. Proof copy stage. Okay, what, um, I, so that I don't assume that I know what proof copy, copy stage is, please could you help us with what it is to describe what it is? Maybe a chat. Okay. All right, while we're waiting for that, Kesena, please, can you go to that slide about making the best of Okay, okay, just hold on, let me just read this. It is when you can see the whole book put in a few copies. Yes, okay, yes, wonderful. That's very, very good. It, it, that would be, that's also a good time to have a pair review that so that if there are anything else, because I, like I, like I'm just coming to realize, you know, when the, manus the, the manuscripts, have how the work is done, it stands on its own and the illustrations are on its own. When uh, they are put together, the editorial layouts that designers put together, I think the, the flow of the work can actually, you know, to have it peer reviewed at that point, it would also be good because the peer reviewer is, also, is looking at your work as a reader this time around, as a child, through the eyes of a child reading the book. 
So I think, yes, this is a good time to also have our work peer reviewed when the layout design is done so that you can really tell whether the words are flowing with the illustration that has been matched with it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, finally, I think I have one last slide and I'll just, um, everyone can just jump in. Okay, uh, uh, Kessiana, please, the one of making the best of, of the peer review team, the feedback from the peer review. So best use of the peer review feedback you know, uh, pay attention if it's if it's done live. You should take notes. If it's like a roundtable at a breakout session of maybe one of our conferences or one of our workshops, then you have to take notes. Then you think through the feedback. Also, tr uh, try to provide answers to any questions that the reviewer has. In the process of providing the answers, you may make some changes to the work. Then, of course, you update the manuscripts along the lines that you both have uh, agreed on. Then improve your next work or your writing or your pre-press process. Like I've just mentioned in, from my, my experience, I, I now have a different way of going through my uh, producing my work because I had peer review done on a published work and of course I saw the mistakes that were in that work. So yeah, you know, you, you just feel a little down, but you won't, um, you just have to pick up and keep moving. Okay, is there any other slide? Okay, this uh, Ruth says, both are helpful, but I feel more emphasis should be laid to the manuscripts to improve the quality of writing. Personally, I think I have had someone review the first pages of my manuscripts and the review made me explore several changes within the story. Great, great, great manuscripts. So manuscripts, a lot of um, answers for manuscripts, but also we should also um, look at it at the proof copy stage and even at post-publication stage. So thank you everyone. I'm actually done. Um, any questions? Any questions? Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you everyone in Akin. I'm grateful for this. So please, any questions? Thank you so much, Chiri. That was such a brilliant presentation. <laughs> Thank you. It was really nice to listen to you and um, learn from your experience. So um, please, if you have any questions, raise your Zoom hand so that you, I can call you to ask them or ask your question or just type in the comment section. And while we wait, you know, there's something you pointed out that while we wait for the question, I just want to ask, you said something about not being emotional about the comment and, you know, peer, peer review is not peer pressure. I just want you to talk a bit more about that, that managing the emotion, you know, behind getting feedback, because it's one thing to ask for feedback. It's another thing to... Um, receive it <laughs> so to say <laughs> feedback can be hard even though you've asked for it yes it can be hard to take on so how do you manage that emotion of um particularly if it's something that maybe something that you care so much about that someone saying is not really nice or doesn't fit well or something how do you manage that emotion of receiving feedback Yeah, um, okay, so uh, let me give you an example. So I, I sent that work also to a, an educator, a children's a, a, um, early childhood educator. And I knew that she was a tough cookie. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not even sure I want to hear what this lady is going to say because I would just feel very bad, you know, I would just feel really bad 
But then I realized that, you know, just writing down um, what the person says and just keeping it, because the truth is on the journey, we're growing. And as a children's book writer, also, yeah, being exposed to more books, you're reading more books as the day goes by, you're reading more books, you begin to see the sense in um, a good uh, peer review feedback. You begin to see the sense of it. So you may, you may not have to just go on immediately to start in it. Just take it down and keep it and come back to it after a little while, maybe a week or so. You um, just writing it and keeping it, then coming back to it after a little while helps because I, I believe that we experience growth on a daily basis as, as because we are industry practitioners, we always, we probably follow um, book bloggers, book blogs, we're buying books, we're reading. So it all will come together. Don't discard anyone. As far as it's a good uh, feedback, remember the reviewer is supporting your work. Is a, in a, a, um, is a supportive process. So you know, just <laughs> just have to woman up or man up to to the feedback. So let me ask a question. Sorry, let me ask a question. Now, would you like? I'm asking everyone. So would you like to be a peer reviewer? Would you like it? Is this something you want to do? Are you like, oh, I don't want to be given by fellow author feedback or what's been somehow let me just hear from us anyone please speak uh and I, um, i'll I call on chema like so chema chema yeah chema has a question so i'm going to just let her ask her question and answer your question at the same time <laughs> chema over <laughs> to you Okay, thank you. Thanks so much for that presentation. Uh, yes, I do like to pay review, actually. I don't mind. Um, but, you know, when I have time to look through and give my own um, feedback, I do enjoy it. So that's the yes. And then my question is that if you're doing, like, you're trying to do, um, get people to peer review your draft manuscripts, what's a good number? What number is too much? Do you know, know that, okay, this one is, this, this is actually okay. I don't need to get more than this amount of number of people to, to review. Okay, uh, well, I didn't, I, I don't really have a lot of experience with that. I didn't really think it true, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if anybody has an answer to that. How many people, how many reviews are too many or too little, I guess. Everyone, every author can, you know, your writing goals and you know people around that can help you with that. I, I, you can make that decision in the creative process by yourself, but I, I don't, I'm not aware of any good number or bad number. Thank you. Let me oh, check. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chinyiri. Um, <laughs> okay, so if there are any I'm more sure questions, is the more review, the merrier. <laughs> Thank if you there so much. Any more questions, please put them in the comment section. It's lovely to be here. It's lovely to meet everyone, and it's just lovely to learn what everyone's doing and connecting with you. Or if I want to connect with you, please share details in the comment section. So you can put your Instagram handle or your any of your social media handle where you'd like other people to connect with you or view what you're doing. For anyone who is here and is yet to pay their renewal, I encourage you to please pay up. Um, it's a fantastic group, as you would have said today. And we run, this is just one of, you know, the other events that we run, one of the many events that we run. So I encourage you to join. There's so many benefits of uh, being a member of Akin. So if you haven't renewed, then please do. Well, thanks, Chingiri. I think I think this is really useful. Um, it may not be perfect from the start, but it's a process. And so we'll learn what works and then we'll get 
that hurt it. You start with something, you try it, you see how it goes. If there are things that we need to tweak, we'll tweak and then we'll make it better. So I have no objection to your suggestion, none whatsoever. Great. Thank you everyone for joining today and we hope to see you next month for the next workshop. Until then, enjoy, keep the group alive and I'll see you again next time. Bye.